I suppose the best place to start is with a story. A story of a girl who looks like an angel and a boy who moves like a shadow. That sounds crazy. There are things that I can do. Look who's been practicing. No, you don't gotta believe in me. Nothing can stop me. I make knives of light. I'm giving people something to believe in. I'm showing freedom like a boat. Huh? I'm making the city a better place. I know what you're gonna say. It's stupid and dangerous. What I was gonna say is, why didn't you ask me to help? You and me saving the world. Running away from bullets. Risking your life. Put my family in danger. Fire! They're coming for you. What do you do? Fight it. Man needs a blade for that. I'm lucky I have you. Me too. Did you have to rip it? You're literally a fashion emergency. I'll show them where the fight is. The city is full of monsters. But this is a different breed. Louisiana is no stranger to sex trafficking. Oh this is so messed up. <laughs> who's taking all those missing girls? I want to help. If I don't do it, who's going to do it? You've had your chance. It's my turn now. Who the hell are you? I'm the one who's going to find those missing girls. This is mayhem. I'm defying, I rise in a crisis. I know what the price is. She slit this guy's throat open with her hand. I will fight back. I'm the leader of the battle. Are you with me, or are you going to slow me down? Don't do this. Set the flame, light a match. He saved them. She's not right about this. What if she is? What I'm capable of comes both ways. You need to be afraid for your life. But if you let those wounds become scars, you're gonna look at yourself one day and not recognize what you see. Hey guys, and welcome back. So, Cloak and Dagger Season 2. Gonna be reviewing that every week. It's coming April 4th, and it's gonna be good. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it's my favorite Marvel series, because you all know Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is. You also know that Legion comes second, followed by Daredevil and the Punisher, and then by the Gifted. Now, at this point, and before the entry of Jessica Jones on my list, Cloak & Dagger makes its entry. I know that's not too high, but it's still not too low. And the series on its first season did manage to do what Runaways has been failing to do so far. Even though I do hear that there's gonna be a crossover with Runaways. Gonna talk about that in a moment, though. But we've got a trailer to break down for Season 2, so let's get started with number 1. Now, to start with general talk, we need to talk to Andy Bowen and her mood on this trailer, because it's kind of different than it was on Season 1. Now, on Season 1, Tandy was always upset. She was always depressed as well, because all along, she was trying to clear her father's name, she was trying to avenge the guy, until she discovered, at the very end of the season, that the man was not really all that good, as good as she would have loved for him to be. That did leave us at the end of the season with a Tandy willing to take the money from Peter Scarborough, the villain of the season, rather than actually avenging her father. Now, we don't know what happened to Peter Scarborough after that. He might have been arrested, he might have ended up dead, probably ended up dead, but there's always a chance that he's gonna show up on Season 2 and seek his own vengeance on Tandy. But however, that's all about the change to the mood, so she discovered something that she didn't expect, she kind of seems to have gotten over it as the new season begins and has kind of dealt with it and is now on a better path. But number two, the story of a girl who looks like an angel and a boy who moves like a shadow. That is pretty much the description of Cloak and Dagger. Don't know who that guy is, he's talking to Dagger over there, and he's kind of onto something. Now this has one of two ways it could play out. It is either that this guy is gonna try to help them, you know, achieve vigilante justice as they go forward, or he's just someone who's onto them, kind of trying to reveal their identities. But I gotta admit though, the acting for Olivia Holt has always been amazing on Season 1, and seems to be amazing on Season 2 as well. And the thing is, when they first announced the name before Season 1 aired, I was thinking, okay, another Disney star. Just like What's-Her-Name, who appeared on Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Ruby, a Duff Cameron, I think. And I was like, okay, she's gonna be one of those, you know, overhyped stars with bad acting. But nonetheless, she did prove me wrong, and that's what matters, really. But number three, some of those moments with Tyrone and Tandy when she's having that conversation with that guy are pretty much, and if I remember correctly, right out of Season 1. So I don't think these over here really matter. What I think matters does come after the Marvel logo drops. And number four, there are things that I can do. Look who's been practicing. And we get that writing on the trailer, embracing your power. 
Now, I personally think this is about one of two things, or actually both of them. One, Tyrone becoming more in control of his powers, because as of the end of Season 1, he still needed training. And that's really kind of implied by what Tandy tells him over here. But there's also, too, the fact that he needs to do more with those powers, like there are these things I can do, meaning that I got the power and I can do something about all the corruption and all the crime out there. The thing about Season 1 is that Season 1 was entirely directed towards the revenge arc, like she was trying to get revenge for her father, and he was trying to get revenge for his brother, and while that might have seemed like it was about vigilante justice, it wasn't really vigilante justice in the most commonest senses, like vigilante justice the way we know it to be, you know, defending the others, protecting the others, fighting crime, fighting corruption, all of those good things that we do see on all of those vigilante series, and all of those good things that we read about in the comics. Now, this second option over here does go to get confirmed even further when we read the statement, means facing your destiny, and that is right after Tandy states that she makes Knives of Light, so pretty much what we've got over here is embracing your power means facing your destiny. Pretty much the first part of that statement, embracing your powers, is about the training, and the entire thing, embracing your powers means facing your destiny, is all about them becoming the vigilantes that they are in the comics. But moving on to number 5, I'm making the city a better place, and I know you're gonna tell me it's stupid and dangerous. That pretty much means that the vigilante bit is gonna start with Tyrone on the second season before Tandy joins in, and that's all about her statement in response to him. What I was gonna say was why didn't you ask me to help? But number 6, we do see the union of these two as Cloak and Dagger, the two vigilantes working together. There's all this talk between the two of them about how dangerous it is, how he puts his family in danger by doing that, and it does seem from one of these scenes with his mother screaming, Tyrone, they're coming for you, and with the SWAT team entering the Johnson's place, that this is actually gonna be coming to fruition. But number 7, man needs a blade for that, lucky I've got you, I think that's gonna be the moment on this season where they actually unite as Cloak and Dagger and start working together. That's also kind of attached to the scene where she's basically cutting the sleeves of his shirt, a comedic moment, you know, he's a fashion emergency. But moving on to number 8, we've got this moment with Otis Johnson, Tyrone's father, and he's knitting through something, kinda seems like Tyrone's cloak, but I'm not really sure, but then he notices those two sketches of Tyrone's cloak. And I'm thinking over here that what's going on is he's gonna start realizing that his son is the vigilante running around as cloak. Now in that case, what we're gonna have on our hands over here is pretty much an Aunt May and Spider-Man kind of situation, except it's gonna be father and son, and it's probably gonna start with resistance to the idea that my son is that vigilante, and then end with the father actually supporting his kid. But number 9 though, a sequence of scenes kind of introduces us to one of the cases these two are going to be dealing with on Season 2, and it kind of seems like a case of sex trafficking, which is kind of really weird for Freeform, so I'm not really sure I heard that correctly, but I do think I did. So yeah, that's pretty much your main case as of the beginning of the season, maybe that's going to change, maybe the head of this gang is going to be someone big out of the comics, but nonetheless, until then, what we know is this much. But number 10, Detective O'Reilly is back and she's now Mayhem, the character that we did expect as of the end of the first season that she's turning into. Now as of the end of the first season, she was dead, and as of the beginning of the second season, she's coming back to life just like she did when she died in the comics. Now I'm not gonna talk much about her powers in the comics over here, because they kinda seem to have deviated on the series from what they happen to be like in the comics. I'm gonna focus on one over here, which does seem to be pretty obvious on this trailer. The rest though, I'm gonna discuss on the second season, when we get to find out how much deviation have they gone with when it comes to Mayhem. Number 11, from the sequence of the scenes that follows after Mayhem comes back from the dead, we get to realize that she's gonna be out there trying to solve the same case that Cloak and Dagger have been working on. Number 12, this is not really the power I was planning on discussing, but she slit that guy's throat with her finger. Now, in the comics, in Coming Back to Life, Mayhem does develop talon-like fingernails, so this really is kind of fitting of what she's like in the comics. But whether or not she's gonna be emitting that poisonous green gas that she does emit in the comics after raking someone's skin with her talon-like fingernails, that's yet to be seen. The objective of the raking in the comics, and as opposed to what we see on this trailer, you know, slitting the guy's throat completely, is to actually open up a wound to allow her green gas to get into the victim's bloodstream, or rather, let's call it her target's bloodstream, because in the comics, she's actually fighting the good fight, 
Number 13, the aggressive personality that she's got in this trailer, that is actually by the comics. She's not really the same person that we got to see on season 1. She is someone completely different, someone a lot more violent and someone who doesn't play by the rules anymore. Number 14, it seems there's gonna be a face-off between the two teams. Well, the team of one, that is Mayhem, and the team of two, that's Cloak and Dagger. Are you with me, or are you gonna slow me down? We read the words, the choice between right and wrong, as Tyrone tells someone, don't do this. Chances are, over here, he's talking to Mayhem, but there is also the chance that he's talking to Tandy, trying to stop her from joining in with Mayhem, playing by her all-new rulebook. It does seem that Tyrone has a no-killing policy and Mayhem is just going all mayhem on everyone, doesn't really care for the rules anymore. It does seem as well that Tandy is going to be taking her side at some point during the season. She's not right about this, what if she is? Number 15, that's the ability I wanted to talk about, Tandy's dagger in the hand of Mayhem. So pretty much in the comics, the daggers of Tandy can be stopped by Mayhem, only not in the fashion that we watched on the trailer, but they rather dissipate, they kind of vanish. It's like if Thanos would go for a snap and he would be targeting half the population of the Dagger universe. Number 16, a fallout between Dagger and Cloak that's kind of expected after the scene where she kind of supports Mayhem. She's probably gonna be going darker over the course of the season before she comes back towards the light, and before Mayhem as well does come back towards the light. You do need to remember that Mayhem in the comics was considered for the Avengers Initiative, so she isn't really all that bad, but she's kind of a heroine. She only needs to get into those shoes first, before you could actually call her one. But that being said though, my work here is done. I just thought I'd cook up this video, post it before I go to bed tonight, and let you know what I think of the trailer. It was a really good trailer, I think it's gonna be an amazing season, and I'm really looking forward to watching it and reviewing it come April. Now you can let me know in the comments if you did like the trailer, if you're looking forward to season 2 of Cloak and Dagger, one of the perks of which is it is gonna help us pass the time all the way until we get Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. season 6. You can let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, subscribing to this channel and enabling notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. But until the next time you tune in for another one of my videos, Cloak and Dagger or otherwise, thank you so much for tuning into this one and have a great day.